I think this is the most pretty keyboard I've ever seen. Let's see if it's good. Whee! Hello YouTubers, this is Anubifier. I'm sure that as many computers exist on the planet, there are at least as many keyboards out there. There are some names such as Keytronic and Cherry AG that are well known as pioneers in keyboard technology. We should insist and should expect that a company will focus on getting the important stuff sorted out first before worrying about anything like RGB bling or some kind of desk appeal. And wow, would you look at that desk appeal. This has to be an industry first, a translucent wrist rest that clicks in and picks up the RGB illumination. So let's hope that Rocket invested at least as much time in getting the mechanics quality and reliability right as they did in making it look that pretty. This is getting interesting and unique with the full-size Vulcan 2 Max and the 60% sized Vulcan 2 Mini, a new bar being set by a familiar name. We begin. Rocket is no stranger to the gaming market being founded in 2006 in Hamburg, Germany. Their innovation and enduring eSport background was recently acquired by the Turtle Beach Corporation in 2019. Despite this, their leadership continues to operate as before and continues to push to offer something unique. Their Vulcan 2 line of keyboards are brand new at the time of releasing this video. As a longtime gamer, I have searched for a competitive edge from Zboard, Corsair, Wooting, and recently Logitech G. I was offered an early opportunity to test and review the Vulcan 2 Mini with an MSRP of $149 and the Vulcan 2 Max with an MSRP of $229 and its included squishy silicon wrist rest. These two products are set to challenge the more upper end segment, so providing that their features are comparable, the Vulcan 2 could actually turn out to be a very good value at that price point. It might turn out to be a solid suggestion to those who want to move beyond their entry level or upgrade to something new. I'm all for investing a little bit more for quality, especially in things that are used more frequently than normal. If you game or type more than one hour every day, $150 to $200 for a great keyboard seems like more of an investment rather than excessive luxury. The heart of any keyboard is the key switch. By choosing the key profile properly, you can get an even better experience. By choosing the key profile properly, you can also get an advantage of speed and reaction time when it matters the most. Many people become locked into a specific profile and won't change. The profiles are historically denoted as a set of colors based on Cherry MX. Red switches are linear with a smooth, uninterrupted travel from top to bottom. Brown switches are known as tactile. For reference, I was a fan of tactile blue, and then I switched to brown when they released, offering a nice balance. But over the past five years, I've actually switched and been on reds. When gaming, many find a linear switch will provide a real speed advantage. If you feel like your time will be split 80% gaming versus 20% typing, then I would suggest you choose a red switch. Brown offers a little bump that your hand remembers and these are known for being good at typing. Brown would be good if you game often but spend more time typing. You can have both, a great typing experience and an advantage in gaming. Latency or reaction delay is important especially in quick paced games. If you add up all of the steps between your reaction and the computer reacting, it makes sense to minimize wherever you can. Purely going off my own research, Rocket heavily prioritized the lowest delay by developing their own Titan 2 optical switch. Titan 2 still relies on a key stem and a spring, however, rather than an electric switch, a mechanical switch, it's optical. Keystrokes are registered when the beam of light is broken as the key is depressed. Each switch has its own optical sensor and its own RGB lighting. The key switches are rated to a ridiculous 100 million click lifespan, which is something that I can't test in house, so we're just going to have to rely on their word, but I can say that the key presses are satisfying and as quick as the best. I've been daily driving their Titan 2 red optical switch for the past couple weeks. I had almost no switch over time needed and this was mainly due to more slight changes between the chassis rather than the switch itself. The stem has a standard cross allowing for third party key sets to be used. The included key caps are of good quality. They are unusual however with a larger gap to ensure that more light is visible. There's no question that the result is one of the most stunning on the markets. The gap could also be seen to help reduce a uh, chance of pushing two or more buttons at the same time by accident. The smaller keycaps are light and move quickly, but I observed at least for me, one minor issue. I still sometimes look at the keys when I type, and this larger gap took some getting used to. When RGB effect is at full strength, the key letters are registered well and lit well, but because everything else is so bright, the letters become a bit blasted and do get a little bit lost. As I said, the keycaps are swappable, which is comforting for me while I got used to these changes. It didn't take very long for me to get used to this, and of course, I do still have the choice to change out the caps in the future, if it still bothers me. Rocket went to a lot of trouble to get the latency low, and I'm going to work back from the USB port to your PC. The Max has an attached double USB plug and a braided wire. 
The plugs are labeled, the branding is nice, and the wire remains quite flexible despite its size. The Mini has a removable USB to USB-C, so you can customize it with your own braided wire or replace it if the wire becomes damaged. Wireless can be made fast, but Rocket went wired only to ensure the absolute least amount of lag, and it operates on a dedicated ARC processor. They mentioned anti-ghosting technology, which is standard on all gaming keyboards, but that's still good. The keybed deck for both is milled out of aluminum with a very nice low shine and no flex. The under tray is plastic and it incorporates grippy rubber feet. There are two adjustable legs with two height options. And physically, everything looks very good with wired operation, quick processing, no deck flex, and good key switches. I found zero wiggle in the keys exactly as you'd expect at this price point. The software works with the hardware and allows you to store four or five profiles depending on the model, which is super useful if you travel or change computers often. Perhaps you visit and game with a friend or participate in LAN events. It's a nice feature that can save you some time. I'm going to go over the software, which they call Swarm. Swarm is easy to navigate, but very thick with levels of layers of operation. If you have more than one Rocket item plugged in, each will appear in their own tab at the top, and these tabs are further broken down into General, Key Assignment, and Key Lighting. In general, you can make it so that the key presses make a clicking sound from your PC speaker or headset. It's extremely good that this is off by default, but it's funny to test the optional sounds. You also have repeat delay settings here and profile slots are available. Each time you make a change and apply, there's about a two second delay to update the keyboard. You can auto apply, but I left that off. Key assignments might need their own video, but I'm gonna say it's both simple and could be complex. You can import off the shelf macros for individual games, but you can fine tune each. Key illuminations can be global themes or can be down to the individual key. You have the regular RGB clown vomit waves, pulsing, breathing, there's a function called AIMO, which when active will remember what you do and change based on the way it feels you want it to be illuminated. I turned it on and I really like it. And if you have multiple rocket items connected, they sync perfectly, which is actually pretty cool. And I now feel that I can end on some impressions. I was happy with the quality and performance for both of these Vulcan variants. They share design and components. They each offer a great off the shelf experience. You don't need to assemble or tune anything. You can very easily clean out dust or crumbs as there is nowhere internally for debris to go. It looks great, and I enjoyed the flexibility that was built into every part of the experience. Everything was just set properly by default out the box. You can get more out of it when you invest more time in the software. To use media keys on the 60%, you do need to use a function and then activate elsewhere. But the media keys on the full size are smartly positioned at the top right with a fantastic metal volume dial that can be pushed to mute. Thoughtful design, good software, good build quality, and great looks. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. These type of videos take time to research, script, and create. If you liked it and got something out of it, please support by sharing and spreading the content with friends. Type safely.